Well, also, he's a liar. And I'll tell you how I know he's a liar, because he writes a bit about me in the book. I know, I was going to ask you about that. Did I, you I got a copy of the book today, and I just checked, as you do, it's a digital copy. I did mm. a little search, up I come three or four times. And on one occasion, he states, as a fact, that I have regular phone conversations with Queen Camilla. For the record, I have never had a single phone conversation with Queen Camilla. Now, he says, as a fact, in his book, that we have regular phone conversations. That, I know personally know, is an absolute lie. He also says that when I said on Good Morning Britain that Meghan Markle was Princess Pinocchio, uh, that apparently she reached out to me, Queen Camilla, to thank me for standing up for the firm. Did she? I had zero contact with Queen Camilla around that time at all. So you've at got all. no embossed thank you notes no, from Camilla nothing, before she was a queen? Nothing. Is there any communication? I did, however, as I said publicly at the time, have conversations with several other members of the royal family, but it wasn't Queen Camilla. So my point, it was come to Hillary. Uh, Hillary, I know personally that just the little bits about me are completely untrue. They're lies. So why should I believe any of this stuff? Well, you're absolutely right to question it. I remember the time that you said that if she uh, told you the weather, you wouldn't believe her. Mm. Um, a few things here I would say. They say if you're going to lie, be big, go bold. He states things so factually that I think your average person, of course, they can't sift through things. They don't know that you know that these were um, mm. mistruths and that bold-faced lies. So if you go so big, people will actually almost assume it's got to be true. I'll tell you something, though, Piers, that some, someone that nobody really is mentioning and no one's talking about, and that is Meghan Markle's dear friend, very close friend that she's posted online, whom she loves, and that is Marcus Anderson. Well, as we know, Omid Scobie has a very close relationship to him. Who knows how much of this is actually coming from him? And maybe that's the source of a well, lot yeah, of these you know lies what? as a well, really, whom he's quoting. It's a really good point, because we know, we know, because she went under oath in a court case, Meghan Markle had to admit she briefed an aide to then brief Scobie and the co-author. And what about Correct. this, Tessa? There's a point in the book where he, he talks about the contents of letters between... King Charles and Meghan Markle, in which two members of the royal household, I know who they supposedly are, right, these two people, let's call them royal household, that two of them had expressed these infamous concerns about the skin colour of uh, baby Archie before he was born, right? But my question is, obviously he's not got that from King Charles. No. So he can only have got it from Meghan Markle or her friends or people she's told this to, right? So, you know... It, it's, it's two things, this book. One is blatant lies. Secondly, stuff he can only have got from Meghan Markle. It is deeply unhelpful and poorly timed from the Sussexes' point of view, which is why I don't think they have collaborated with him recently. Remember, this book's been a long time in the cooking. Mm. He started writing it before the Queen died. It's possible that in the wake of the Oprah Winfrey interview when tensions were running high, that things did get spilt out, that now I expect the pair of... That racism allegation, I've said this to you before, it never appeared in Harry's book. Yeah. So it's never been mentioned again. So they've moved on. It's like it never... Ha no, it's like it never happened, which, by the way, is what I said at the time. I don't believe this happened. Let me go back to Hillary. Uh, Hillary, what is the reputation of Meghan and Harry in America right now? I mean, does... Do people care? Well, actually, I would say when Harry bangs on about mental health, most Americans, it seems, are far more concerned about the price of petrol here, gas, and the you know inflation rate in the U.S. That's the, sort of the main topic of conversation. But I will say this about in the U.S. I tell you an absolute fact. Not only can you look at the polls, Pierce, but look at the A-listers, look at the Hollywood set. They're not invited to all those A-list events anymore. I think that says a lot because they're the bellwether for the American people. The paparazzi here isn't as interested in them as they were. And look what happened in New York City. They even had to make up that concocted car yeah, chase ridiculous. that the mayor of New York, Eric Adams, yeah, had to refute. Anyone, who's been, in, anyone who's been in New York knew that story was nonsense. Uh, Tessa, final point. We've got about 30 Correct. seconds. He says this is the beginning of the end of the monarchy, is it? No. Like I say, Omid Scobie is behind the curve. Harry and Meghan will not have wanted this book to land now. They have been very silent recently. They have dropped on the radar. They did make a few mistakes and they're trying to rebuild. Meanwhile, the monarchy's had a relatively good year, all calm on the Western Front. Let's yeah. just poodle along and I expect I Charles and Harry... Will I actually think this Christmas. might be the end game for Omid Scobie. One of the most loathsome little lickspittles in modern history. Uh, thank you both very much indeed for joining me tonight.